welcome. We have uh, quite a bit to cover, and so we're going to jump right into multiple items that we want to share with you this morning. Uh, most of them revolve around summer activities. It's that time of year, and so our first announcement is for Neighborhood Night Out. We will be again holding Neighborhood Night Out on Tuesday, August 13th from 530 to 9. And it, the event itself is great for promoting neighborhood safety and we, we encourage people to get to know their neighbors um, on a personal level. And so many neighborhoods sponsor picnics and outings and cookouts and great gatherings. What the city will do is we'll waive the park fees for groups that want to meet in the neighborhood parks. And we will also supply barricades at no charge for as long as the barricades last for those that want to block off some neighborhood streets. The registration form is available online as well as the form for street closures. You can register your party by visiting wichita.gov slash NNO or call 268-4165 with questions. Um, we would encourage you to be the first to Register your party to be the first to get barricades uh, or certainly if you want to hold your neighborhood night out in a park that those areas are pretty limited so we would encourage you to register for that. We're trying to make it easy. It's kind of the garage sale season uh, for people to register for their garage sale. You know summer isn't just about pools and fun and um, watching Cindy Claycomb run marathons. It's about garage sales. And so the city's business licensing division issues more than 50,000 licenses um, on, and we're trying to do more of it online. So you can get a garage sale license online, uh, you can get your dog license online, you can get your business license online, and for those of you that don't want to do it online, you can still come down to City Hall and, and um, do it the old-fashioned way, but we're trying to make it convenient. So no more driving downtown for those that don't want to. You can get online at wichita.gov slash garage sales. Trying to make it a little easier for you. Swim lessons. So from blowing bubbles to water aerobics, the City of Wichita Park and Rec offers affordable swim lessons at seven different locations across the city this year. Lessons start at just $30 in range and skill level for all levels of swimmers for kids and adults. During the aquatics master plan process, we heard that learning to swim was important to the community. And so we're excited to offer these classes to support swim education, which is not only fun, but crucial for part of the childhood safety education. Parents can register again online for swim lessons or aqua aerobics at until Friday at wichita.gov park and rec, but they can also sign up at pools after that date. Another summer activities or summer transit and champs program this summer we're excited once again to provide free meals to kids 18 and under at locations across the city from june 3rd through july 26 kids can come and eat for free no questions asked no id required this is one way for us to help feed the kids off the, uh, the months where school is not in session we don't want any child in our community to go hungry and so kids can eat at one of these following locations. We have a location at Grace Revolution Church, 812 South Oliver, from 1130 to 1230, Monday through Friday. Again, Grace Revolution, 812 South Oliver. The second location is Mending Place at South City, 1513 East Galena, serving meals Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from noon to 1 p.m. And the third location is Windridge Apartments at 2502 West Wildwood, serving meals Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to noon. Uh, our transit department will once again be offering free rides for children 18 and under this summer. From June 1st through August 31st, children can ride any bus for free with a student ID or student issued ID. Kids can get a free ID at the Transit Center downtown at 214 South Topeka. Rides are unlimited and kids can find transit schedules at wichitatransit.org. 
And again, the summer reading program. Wichita Public Library offers another fun summer tradition, the summer reading program. Beginning May 28th, parents can sign their kids up at wichitalibrary.org slash summer reading or by stopping by any library location. From infants to teens, the more kids read this summer, the more prizes they can earn. The summer reading program is just one way that the library works to create young readers. This program encourages parents and caregivers to do the most important thing. They can build early literacy skills. Read to your children and read to them often. Let's work together to support literacy in our community. And then want people to, to still understand that the budget simulator is active. If you want to decide how to spend the city's budget, we encourage you to get on the budget simulator. You can uh, add more street sweepers. You can add more police officers. Since launching this last week, we've had nearly a thousand people use the budget simulator tool. And the tool is available on wichita.gov. It simulates what it's like to manage the city's $244 million budget. We encourage you to get on there and see what the impact of your tax bill would be. It's a great way for you to uh, fully understand everything that's going on in city government. So the tool closes in early June, um, and we still want your feedback. One cancellation I'll mention, both because of the we weather and the holiday weekend, we're not going to hold the walk along well this Saturday. and. Um, we are pleased to see many of the council members with us this morning. So I, I would defer to them. Is there anything that we left out as we approach this holiday weekend? If you have any questions of the council members, they're happy to come up. Um, with the potential for more rain and flooding tonight, does the city have a plan or people on standby? How does, how does that work? So we always have our public works staff out there during storm events, making sure that uh, the drains are working properly and there's no buildup of debris so that the stormwater system can work as it was intended to work. We're pretty fortunate, as you can understand, all of the... Um, all of the communities around us have been experiencing major flooding and it's hard when you have rains of this caliber, but Wichita has not experienced the kind of flooding that we've had in past years. Much of it still due to uh, the levee that runs around our city. If you remember just about uh, three or four years ago, Brian Fry would know, he has a mind like a steel trap, we had to spend about $10 million on that levy and some improvements and getting it certified. Some of that happened after Katrina when they changed the rules for levies and dams around the country. And so we've spent quite a bit of money, but more importantly, we have spent considerable dollars in some more flood mitigation projects all over the city and they're, and they're holding up. They're making a difference. And so that's what's kept us from as severe a flooding that many of the communities all around us have experienced because we have been focusing on that for many, many years. And uh, in fact, just last year alone, they ended up uh, digging a larger dry detention pond in connection with the new urban wetland park that uh, went in at 29th of Mays that Councilmember Fry was able to cut the ribbon on just this last Saturday. And, and that dry detention pond made a big, big difference for West Wichita. I just wanted to ask with budget time coming up, if you had any specific issues, concerns, goals, what would you like to see out of the next budget process? So, so great question, George. First, we want to hear from the community. We're in a different position than we've been in uh, nearly in my entire public life on this council. So as many of you heard, last year we ended the year about two and a half million dollars in more revenue than we anticipated. We were able to guide that money over to savings. Early uh, predictions are that we may end up this year with a million dollars more in revenue than we anticipated. And so we are looking at what the community would like to see to um, what's most important to them in both programming and, 
and uh, maybe quality of life types events. What I would encourage people to fully understand is it's should should focus on a one-time expenditure. So when we end up with a million dollars extra like we did this year, or potentially we'll do this year, doesn't mean we can roll that million dollars into um, annual programming. And, and um, so we're in a good place. We haven't, we haven't had the luxury of, of these kinds of budget numbers in a long time. And that's with fully um, staffing all of our programming. The libraries that you heard were going to expand. I think Councilmember Claycomb did a nice job of explaining where we're at on uh, branch library systems. I know uh, several council members sat on a committee and, and uh, they rolled out a plan that, that looks at spending some significant dollars for branch libraries. We're well ahead on police staffing where we were just three years ago and uh, continue to support those kinds of public safety initiatives. And so now we're in the, let, let's hear from the community and see what they want to um, spend their hard-earned dollars on. But it's a great place to be. And most years we've been having to look at cuts. I know we are going to be talking about our aquatics program coming up. We are expanding our aquatics program, as most of you have probably heard. Uh, so we are going to totally remodel six of our area pools instead of just three uh, from what the um, uh, aquatics subcommittee suggested a few years back. And then we're going to build six aquatics playgrounds, splash pad playgrounds that are going to be pretty significant. And one of those is going into uh, Plainview, which has never had never had any kind of aquatics program down there and that's going to be new and some of that's starting this summer so we're we're in a good place in a good place and lucky to be in that place but it's because of you know some tough decisions we've had to make over the years and making sure we're financially in a good place and uh, so it's it's going to be a much more enjoyable budget season than what we've experienced in the past you say to the folks that live like right near the Arkansas River that may be worried about those rising waters as we get into this weekend holiday weekend especially more Sure, so we're continually monitoring it. Our staff feels pretty good that the river is not going to come out of its banks and we will be the first to alert them, but we are constantly monitoring at this point. It is a little difficult to predict where exactly the uh, the um, Rain may fall, but um, all of the forecasts that we've seen, uh, we're pretty confident that the, that the river will stay within its banks. And again, much of that has to do with what we've been able to accomplish over the last 10 years. Well, thank you all. Great questions and, um, and stay safe out there. I know many of you cover these storm events and we hope that Mother Nature is kind to us, but we never fully can predict where major storms seem to crop up as we've had some, uh, obviously last night to our friends to the east and, and cer certainly we encourage all of those to keep Missouri in your prayers and uh, we hope the very best for all of our folks this holiday weekend and, and can't encourage you enough to be safe first. So understand your surroundings and be safe and and watch the weather thank you